Hey y'all, it's Anime Caveman, and today I'm going to be reviewing episode 81 of Gekage no Gitaro. And I gotta say, this episode was surprisingly amazing, actually. And let me explain why. The reason why this episode was amazing is because it was a tense episode, and that was without there being a single action sequence. So that's what really blew my mind with this episode. Because the premise is pretty much this yoga called Hiragami, who is pretty much a yokai that wants to become a mangaka, but it's kind of tough because he has like an oh, extremely yokai ish appearance, and whenever he tries to talk to like people in like the manga industry, they get scared until one day this guy called Suetomi actually shows up and he agrees to actually. Um, help out Suetomi because he believes that there is some potential in his manga artwork and he even mentioned he doesn't care if the manga is drawn about a yokai either, because he believes there's only two type of mangas in the world ones that entertain and ones that don't and I really love that about this episode because not only do you have a character that's extremely detailed in Hiragami in this episodic episode you also have Suetomi who's surprisingly detailed and throughout the episode you just want to root for these two, you know? Especially when the man is stepping down on them. And I'm like, oh, man. man. <laughs> it just throws curveballs, emotional curveballs. And I like how as the episode progressed, you see these two bond. Hiragami's manga, at first he struggles to make manga, but then as eventually as he starts to convey more emotions because he gets advice from Suotomi, he starts to make better manga. His manga goes up in popularity. Then you get introduced to a conflict where you have this guy saying, Oh, well, a yokai mom can't be abusing the awards because a, a yokai illegally uploaded manga, which was Ratman. Of course it had to be Ratman. <laughs> but anyways, parts one's in, then it gets kind of sad, and, and then I kind of feel emotions, and I was like, no. But I like how afterwards, you get an epic scene where Sao Tomi, the human editor, Helps out his buddy Hiragami, throws a letter of resignation towards this um, guy that's one of the heads in the manga publishing company. And then he says, afterwards, he makes his own magazine so that they can publish Suotomi's manga. And Suotomi's manga gets a lot of popularity. And at the end of the day, people actually believe Suotomi's manga, sh I mean, not Suotomi's manga, Hiragami's manga. She won the awards, and I kind of like that, how the episode ended things in a neatly bow. And, at the end of the day, Hiragami succeeded. But, in doing that, I like how this episode actually did a lot when it comes to theme exploration. Because, when you had Ratman take a negative action, it made other yokai look bad. And I like how this episode kind of had the implicit message of, just because one person in a specific group does something bad doesn't mean you should, like think everyone in the group is bad and I kind of like how the episode has the message of you shouldn't just because someone does something bad doesn't mean everyone in that specific group or category is bad I like how the episode has that message and I also like how the episode has the message of it doesn't matter what your background is what you look like or whatever is if you make glorious content or artsmanship that's what matters the most at the end of the day not your appearance. And I like how this episode has that too. I feel like anyone that watches this episode can feel some inspiration. And on top of that, it also had the split the message of live your dream. That was the explicit that was another explicit message. And the other message of also being that awards, they really don't really quantify the quality of something. And here's an example. When Star Wars, the original, um, came out, when it was just called Star Wars or Star Wars A New Hope, when it came out in the year that it came out, it didn't win thing it didn't win like the best picture award. But we all know when in that specific year Star Wars was a cultural phenomenon. It revolutionized the movie industry. And that was really the most memorable movie that came out in a specific year, which I believe it was uh, 1977. I'm going to actually do a quick check because... Because why not? Um, yeah. I might be wrong, though, because it's going to bug me. Yeah, it, it was 1977. I thought I was off. 
I just had to check though because that's gonna bug me if I get it wrong because then if I put it in the description box, it wouldn't feel as right, you know? But yeah, everyone knows that that movie was the one that was really, really groundbreaking. So that's what I kind of like of the message, you know? It has a message of just because your thing doesn't win an award, your arts I mean, the one, just because a work of art doesn't win an award doesn't mean you need an award to quantify the value of something, you know? If it's got great quality and all that, and if people love it, then it's got value in and of itself. I also like that implicit message in this episode, and that's why I thought this episode was great. Episodes like this are going to make Gig Gig and a Guitar 2018 timeless for the most part. I think it's going to age beautifully, because I think this can, this message can apply to like almost any era, actually. You can pretty much take this episode, I mean, I'm pretty sure you could take like the script of this episode and put it in like the 90s, and it would apply pretty well. You could probably take this script of this episode, apply it towards maybe like 2028, 20, or whenever Gig 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 gets like a potential another series, apply it there, and the script would still be pretty darn great. I think that's how it, powerful I thought this script for this specific episode was. And that's why from the script standpoint, this uh, from the story standpoint, this episode gets my full marks. From the character standpoint, it was great. Like, you can literally, I can literally describe Hiragami's personality in, like, great detail. He's a yokai with big dreams, and he kind of gets angry, but he doesn't go to an extent where he goes extravagant on it, because he pretty much calms down for the most part before he escalates the situation when so Tommy was saying at, when his manga at the time wasn't good enough at that time. And then, yeah, so Tommy, who's got nerves of steel, where if you're not complete, if you're like not completely right in something, he's gonna call you out. And I like that. I like his sharp personality, but then you see so Tommy's compassion when he stands up for Hiragami, his friend, also. That's another element I like about this episode. And that's why I thought this episode was so lively. It had lively characters that I'm going to remember. And then on top of that, the cherry on top is Guitaro's character development. It's like... Because in this episode, Guitaro mentions parts ways in. Humans and Yoka shouldn't even get close. But he mentioned with the caveat of he has seen cases before his very eyes where humans and Yoka can have happy endings. And that was midway in. Because when the episode ends, Guitaro pretty much has the mindset, at least it's implied that he has the mindset of humans and yokai can truly coexist because when Guitaro says the um, human, when Hiragami says that, when Hiragami pretty much mentions something regarding Guitaro's mindset on humans and yokais having a fair distance, Hiragami pretty much says that he disagrees, he disagrees with that and humans and yokais can coexist and you know, I like how Guitaro, you see some character development there because he smiles as if you were in like an agreement of that, of humans and yokai, there being a good chance of them coexisting. So I like how at the end of the episode, you see character development for Guitaro because, well, yes, in the previous episode, it did show off that Guitaro was softening his, his stance on yokais and humans not being able to coexist in this episode. I like how in this episode, he pretty much, it looks, seems like for the most part, that mindset is completely gone, or at least mostly gone, because now he has faith that they can coexist someday. And that's why I thought it had a great character metamorphosis for Guitaro. And you even sign, see him smiling more, and he even reads Hiragami's manga. So that's why, from the character standpoint, this episode was amazing. Animation and art, it was beautiful. I mean, do I need to say more? Oh, this episode totally brought it. You can tell. The animators crafted almost every frame with love and care. And the music was well placed. Voice performances were amazing. And I, I'm just tip my invisible cap to Toei. And they've made a masterful episode. This episode gets written up 10 out of 10. I ain't gonna give it anything less. So anyways, y'all, these are my thoughts on Gigagay no Guitar episode 81. Be sure to comment on your thoughts on any thoughts about my review in the comment section below or the episode itself in the comment section below. Share the video, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Because I'm definitely going to be reacting to the next Gekka Gekka no Guitar episode. As long as nothing majorly drastic comes in my life. Like, the only way I will not review the rest of the Gekka Gekka no Guitar series is if something extremely bad happens in my life. Or if some circumstances happen against me. Save for that happening, 
I'm going to be live reacting to the rest of the episodes of this series. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good and safe day. Bye-bye.